Hi, hello, hi, hi, it me, and friends. So this is Chandler, this is Echo. Did you want to introduce yourselves? You go first. Okay, cool. My name is Echo Gillette. I make mostly art content at this point, just art and drawing videos, and I use she, her pronouns. And hello, my name is Chandler. I make videos about being non-binary and my physical transition as a non-binary person, as well as just general educational videos about LGBTQ topics, and my pronouns are they, them. So, why are we all in the same video together in this room? What possibly could we all share in common other than just being like super adorable? Well, I'm glad you asked. So. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Today, we're gonna talk about asexuality. And specifically, I would like to talk about sex as an asexual person and, you know, what do asexual people get out of sex? You know, why do we have sex? What's it like? What else could sex be other than just a strictly sexual experience? So for me personally, I find that sex could be gender affirming for me as a trans person. I feel like that's the main thing that I get out of it. So it could feel really validating for me. And also just like, you know, self-exploration as a trans person and just, you know, all that good stuff. So, you know, if y'all want to go ahead and explain, like, what else could you get out of sex as an asexual person? What else could it be? Okay. I like sex as an idea of something that you can, like, help to, like, give back to your partner. I don't know. I just see it, like, as like, make a way to express good. yourself. Yeah. Okay. Or to, like, express your love for someone. I like that, too. I like, personally, the idea of making my partner feel good. Yeah. And feeling like, for me, that I'm the only person that my partner has decided to be this intimate with because I understand that it's an intimate experience. Yeah. And so I like knowing that we're sharing an experience that for both of us can be seen as really vulnerable and intimate and being able to connect with that. Yeah. And I like the gender thing that you said too because I feel like it's a space for like specifically having a relationship that is very like I'm in a very queer relationship, like we're both trans. And so I almost see it as it's even like more of a safe environment where I feel completely welcome as a trans person with my partner, like mm -hmm. in the way that they see what society thinks or tries to tell us is ugly with transness and then they treat it as something beautiful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I definitely think that not only like as a trans thing, it just, it could be a validating experience and like a, a, an experience where you get to appreciate your body and you get to appreciate your partner's body and appreciate them appreciating your body. And it's just this, you know, it could be um, an intimate romantic thing. It doesn't need to be intimate sexually, at least like in your own experience. As well as the fact that for me, in terms of how it validates my gender, it's not only that I could, let's say, sometimes if I use a prosthetic, it helps me alleviate some of my bottom dysphoria, but sometimes I don't always use a prosthetic and that also helps me to just embrace my body as being whole sexually and that it sort of helps me to reinforce the idea that I'm not I'm not missing anything. Yeah. You know? Fair. That yeah. that it can it is desirable and like I said, it doesn't have to only be in a sexual way, just romantically. Sometimes I have this internalized transphobia or just this internal self-deprecating dialogue where you know, I think like my partner's making a sacrifice by being with me somehow, you know? Mm. Um, uh, I yeah. definitely, I definitely felt that a lot. Right before Xander was with me, Xander was with, was with an AMAB trans person for two plus years. And Xander is an AFAB trans person. And so when Xander started dating me for a long time, I felt like it was a downgrade that dating me was giving up something that you enjoy sexually because I don't have those parts. I can't offer you that experience. And so I definitely think that, like what you said with like prosthetics and stuff, it definitely is a way to like reinforce in my head like that I'm not lesser than something else and that my experiences can be a complete whole experience and it helps me feel like accepted in my queer body and know that I'm not like a downgrade. I also feel like it can just generally be a pleasurable thing in terms of just like, I don't want to call it mechanical, but just well, like in a physical, like a literal yeah, yeah, stimulation yeah. because you have nerve endings. It's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It like, can be like physically pleasurable. Like you touch an asexual person and 30 days later we get a notice that like, like no, we, we, still, <laughs> we still feel things, you know? Yeah. So there's that and I just want to address the question. There are two things, two questions that I get quite often. Uh, some from asexual people being like, you know, I'm asexual, but you know, I like to touch myself. Am I still asexual? And it's like, I always joke that I'm like, I mean, by definition, yes. I, like, like yeah. in a single-celled organism, asexually reproduces. It reproduces on its own. So I mean, I, yes. 
but also just like, you know, body exploration and self-appreciation and like, you know, it, it can be validating in a lot of ways, like mm -hmm. whether it be about gender or just about like body confidence and stuff like that. And again, for me, I always have this thing where both as a disabled person and as a trans person, again, I go into this whole thing like my partner's making a sacrifice. So I always worry that they don't like my body or there's something missing. And then, you know, that's just whether I'm having sex with them or just like, you know, me doing me, it helps you sort of like, oh yeah, that I'm this whole lovable, enjoyable thing. I feel like that's another thing where it goes back. It could be considered like a completely physical thing that's not necessarily related to certain aspects of your sexuality, yeah. masturbation in general. Yeah. Uh, it could be. Not has to be. I want to throw that out there. First year of testosterone, you know your libido goes way up. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it felt like, like, like a chore. I'd be like, no, not now. Why do you have to? Oh. <laughs> so I'm busy. I'm like, there are dishes to do, I have to vacuum, I have this video to edit. Yeah, and it's also just fun because like, I, like, like you're literally like, like growing a little party. You're like, oh, hello, what well, a nice for you to join us. Yeah, so that's just that's, Welcome it's to the party. party. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Welcome. So there's that. I want to address the question that I know is going to be out there. So it's like, well, if you have sex and there are ways of you enjoying sex, what makes you asexual? So I think it's because there's a difference between engaging in sexual activities and enjoying them and experiencing sexual attraction to mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And yeah. that's where it's lacking. I don't experience sexual attraction. I don't look at someone and feel a little feel. At least at least for me, this is my own narrative. It's just nothing happens sexually when I look at someone. Yeah, you know? same. Yeah, I would say um, in people that are not asexual, it can be easy to imagine this. And like, for example, I made a video about this before with um, Elena Fender, who is not asexual, mm -hmm. and she brought up the good video. point. Please Thanks. go watch the video, by the way. <laughs> I, I love it. Thank you so much. That's partially what inspired this whole collab. Oh, gassing thing. me up, stop. <laughs> um, but she made the point of, say, if two people go to a club or whatever, they meet and they just want, and she even said, like, they just, like, they don't feel anything, they just want to get off. Like, there can be experience experiences like even for non-asexual people where they just have sex because they want like that physical stimulation and they want to feel like the literal physical pleasure that can come from it like you said from nerve endings yeah yeah but that's not the same as like having this sexual attraction to for instance like to your partner where it's something deeper than that that you feel because for example with myself i agree a lot with what you say like there's a difference in terms of like the actual action of like physically your body responding to sensation rather than an emotional or like attachment, yeah. like attraction. Yeah, exactly. And like I can still find someone aesthetically pleasing, which has been a struggle for me as a queer person, as an asexual yeah. person growing up. I'm like, do I want to be with you? I don't want to look like you. I don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There's do so wanna, much here. Do I want to be you or be on you? Yeah, yeah I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, and like I always thought, like my sexuality for me was always like, oh well, maybe. I, I mean, eventually, I was like, maybe I'm just a repressed lesbian. Oh, that ship. She's gone now. But she's left the bay. <laughs> she's out. But then there was sort of this like, well, maybe I'm just not old enough. Like, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. I, then I realized I'm like, I'm like 21. I'm like, uh, it's not. It's not. It's not gonna happen. Thing. When's the switch when gonna flip gonna on? Happen? I don't yeah. understand. Yeah. yeah this yeah. like constant waiting of, okay, when's it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen someday where I yeah. just magically start feeling sexual attraction? Yeah. So, um, without yeah. asking any questions that are too personal, uh, if you mm -hmm. have any experience to share about being an asexual person in a sexual relationship mm -hmm. with an allosexual person, which is someone who yes. is not ace, basically. I have never experienced that. Every person I've ever been in a sexual relationship with has been on the asexual spectrum. Really? Yes. Mm. Lucky. I will say though that one thing I can vouch for is so for example Xander was in a relationship like that and because his girlfriend was so sexual he felt that he needed to be so sexual mm -hmm. to match up with that and so when he started dating me it was almost as if he was just regurgitating what he had learned from her even though it wasn't him mm -hmm. and so yeah. we both kind of felt this need to be very sexual because we felt that's what happens in a relationship like that's what you're like supposed that's, to yeah do. that's the ultimate declaration of your love right like that's as we're told in society mm -hmm. so we both felt like, well, this is what we're going to have to do, and we have to do it in order to like live to up count. to what society, yeah, <laughs> to what society says our relationship should be, as it is a sexually active relationship. I was in a long-term relationship with someone before I completely realized that I was ace, because, like, I'm, like, on the, the spectrum of asexuality. So, like, there are points where I'd be, like, sexually attracted to people, like, once every few years, and I was like, oh, clearly I'm not ace, because, like, I've been attracted to, like, three people in my lifetime, clearly! <laughs> Clearly, there's no way I can be asexual. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and so when I was in a relationship with this person, I didn't realize that I was ace. I would accidentally make them feel like they were unattractive mm, or that something was okay. wrong with them because mm. I never brought it up. I never initiated anything. I was like always just generally kind of passive. Yeah, I hear that narrative a lot. It never even occurred to me like for the longest time and that was part of the reason that I, I slowly like was like, yeah, yeah, I'm deaf, I'm ace. Because <laughs> it's like he was, ugh, he's wonderful and like, but yeah, no, no feelings there. So it was just, you know, yeah. Yeah. I make I, relationships um... very complicated. It can because then sometimes... Especially if people aren't aware, sorry. Yeah, no, no, I totally get it. Like, especially sometimes partners could uh, begin to personalize it and think like, well, why aren't you yes. attracted to me? And it's like, I'm, I'm not attracted to anyone in yeah. that way. It's not... But that doesn't or, or mean I don't love scarcely. you. Yeah. Because yeah, that's the that's immediate thing. thought of, yeah. oh, you don't love me then. Or I'm undesirable. Like, no. yeah. 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 Yeah, and it's like, it's not, it's not that. So for example, I'm also on the aromantic spectrum and this is a thing that Xander and I really really had to talk about when we were dating because there would be times where I was just not feeling any romantic like attraction but also semi-romance repulse where I just didn't want to do anything yeah. and it got to a point where he started thinking that I was losing feelings for him and that I didn't want to be with him and that I found him undesirable and that I was just kind of there just to be there and it really took him a lot of rewiring in his own head to be like this is not about you. They love you, but this is just something that sometimes happens that it's okay, that doesn't change that in the larger scope of things, they do want to be with you. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of like negotiating that I saw go on in his head where he had to understand that a relationship with me was not going to be the same as a relationship with someone who's not on an ace or a rose spectrum. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where I would fall on the a romantic spectrum, but in terms of like being occasionally romance or policy, yes, that is something that happens to me. Sometimes I'm just, I get a little like, it's just, it's too yeah. much, you know, I feel, it feels it, forced. This is just personal question. Does it feel like something's on your skin? Yeah. Like, yeah I know like, that feeling. It it's just, like, I, I don't want like just. Yeah, that's why it's kind of like I don't super acknowledge it and I'm not super like, you know, I, I don't dig too deep into it and like my partner is aware, it's just there's not really a word on it, but like it's an obvious thing that happens to me that I'm like, I don't like, like I have a hard time understanding that other people genuinely feel the way that they do in movies, let's say. I'm like, yeah. that, that looks fake. Mm -hmm. that, I, don't, I don't understand. Yeah. And like that, you know, it's, forget it's that those fake. attractions are real. Yeah. yeah. They're, like, they they're, like people look, just feel those. Yeah. Like, like they just look at each other like, oh, like, they have this, like, attitude, like, mm, and it's like, why are you, why just talk like a person? Why are you doing like that? So that's why I'm like, I can't tell if it's just because I'm not super big on intense displays of emotion. I'm more like, I will verbally explain how I feel, even if it doesn't show. So maybe, like, it could be, again, like, I'm also, like, on the autism spectrum. So, like, maybe I just don't understand those displays of emotion. So it's like, you know, yeah. kind of blurs together for me. So I want to just touch a bit on non-sexual displays of affection. So. Okay. For example, I, even though I'm asexual, I do still enjoy non-sexual displays of affection, and my favorite one being, I really love when my partner draws on me, and I really enjoy drawing on her, and uh, things like that, or like, like when someone plays with my hair, or I'll play with her hair, stuff like that, like, there's still, there's still... Affectionate touching? Affectionate touching, but non-sexual. If that's something you enjoy, like, would you well, want to share your favorite in a way. Yeah, would you, would you want to share your favorite non-sexual, but sensual way of being with your partners? Xander is gonna laugh so hard when he sees this. I really love back rubs. Ah, uh, my neck is always in pain from always <laughs> looking down and editing videos. But also, I um, where I work, I have to look down a lot. And I'm always like, can I have a neck rub? Can I have a neck rub? Can I have a back rub? Please, please, because I like the little massages. I eat that shit hair. up. Like, you like yeah. having your hair played with? Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Like, people brushing my hair, well, with my hair. That's, that's cute. The best. Um, question. Yes. Does it ever make you uncomfortable feeling like your hair is getting too greasy when people do that? A little bit. I try and keep my hair as clean as possible. But <laughs> also, when my hair... Okay, I can tell when my hair is getting dirty because I will start playing with it because of the way that it... Like, when it starts getting, like, oily, it will collect into, like, yeah, yeah. sections. And I, I will play with those individual sections yeah. and, like, spin them around. It, it's yeah, the most same. annoying habit that I have, like, visually. My mom was worried that I had depression or something wrong when I was really little because I, it's something I've done, like, my whole life. She's like, are you okay? Are you stressed out? And it's just like... No. <laughs> Playing with my hair. I've done it's it my whole the, life. And then what about feet? Really well, yeah, like I said, I really... My favorite thing, which seems like it's such a weird thing, but I really love when my partner draws on me. Like, she, she'll yeah. write on me or she'll draw on me. Just the feeling of a pen on the skin, it's just, yeah. it feels really great. And it also makes me feel like she's, like, paying attention to me and drawing so, things. Like, oh, would you draw, you know? What about, like, experiences in which your partner is touching your skin to skin? That's hard, because sometimes I'm like, like, 
being on the spectrum makes it that some types of touch are like sometimes just too much for me. Oh, well, um, I don't necessarily mean like like that, but like for example, rubbing your back like that. No, see, like things like like back rubs and stuff like that. Really, I'm like, mm, no. Yeah, I can get that with the back of my neck and like the back of my shoulders, like this area. If, like I don't know why some the way that some people touch my back is just like it it I can't get it off of me. Yeah, it makes you just want to go like. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, like this weird like recoil of like. That's how I feel when anyone touches my back except Xander. Or my mom. My That's mom gives good. nice back rubs. I'm okay with back touches if it's like 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 the nails, you know, like a scratchy back. Yeah, like 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 not hard mm. scratching, but just like like you know, like tracing. Any sort of tracing feeling feels pretty good for me. I, I enjoy that. And uh, yeah, like like the hair touches, but the hair touches do need to be at the end of the day because like don't mess up my hair and don't make my hair greasy. But if it's at the end of the day, it's fine. <laughs> you know? Okay, know. but mood. Right. <laughs> so yeah, like if it's at the end of the day, it's like it's fine. I don't mind because we went to bed anyway. So yeah, that was it. It's just you know if ever you're in a relationship with an asexual person or a person on the asexual spectrum, and you know they're not in the mood for sex, but you still want to be intimate with each other. Like there are non-sexual ways of being intimate. So it's just wow. See, that else. was a thing in my personal relationship that I was always worried about. Because I was always worried that it was supposed to lead to sex. Oh yeah, that that's because like the there's foreplay. that weird yeah. yeah. So in the back of my mind, because they were like a much more sexual person, in the back of my mind, I always had this like, are you doing this because you just like actually care and want to stimulate my scalp or whatever, or because like you want this to go somewhere? But at the same time, I was never like, I never straight up asked. Yeah, communication was such a problem. Yeah, I feel like since I've started to engage more in non-sexual physical displays of affection, it's helped my partner not make that relation in her head of like, oh, if we're the not having sex, thing. yeah, if we're yeah. not having sex, it's because you're not into me. It's like, so it's my way of physically showing the affection that she requires in a relationship and me not having to force myself into wanting to have sex when it's just really not something I'm in the mood for. That's very interesting. Yeah, I feel yeah. like the same thing. That makes a lot of sense. Cool. Well, thank you so much yeah. for being on my channel. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you all enjoy this. And if you have any other questions about asexuality, being in a relationship with an asexual person, all that good stuff, you can go ahead and leave in the comments. And uh, yeah, any any parting words of wisdom I think you'd like to say? Tip your housekeeper. Tip good. Your housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say assert your boundaries, but <laughs> that too. Cool. I would just say communication is key, but it's my own channel, so I guess nobody really wants to my last words. Um, anyway, <laughs> I do. Oh, thanks. I do. Okay. All right, thanks so much for watching. I love you. Bye.